Hello friends, welcome to video series on geography. In this video, I will be explaining about jet streams. Understanding jet streams is important for us to understand the future concepts of frontalysis or front formation, which is highly important for understanding temperate cyclones. So jet streams greatly influence the weather of temperate regions, especially the polar jet stream, and also the path of temperate cyclones mainly depends on jet streams. First, let us look at a concept called as geostrophic wind. The jet streams are the best example for geostrophic winds. Geostrophic winds are the winds which blow perpendicular to the pressure gradient force. You know that there is pressure difference between high pressure system and a low pressure system, and this is the direction of the pressure gradient force. So, the pressure gradient force is nothing but but the tendency of the wind to move in a certain direction. So this will be the obvious path of the wind since the wind travels from a region of high pressure to a region of low pressure. So this is in ideal conditions but when we take practical phenomena into consideration we see that the wind movement is greatly influenced by something called as Coriolis force. I have given a detailed account about Coriolis force when dealing with pressure belts and permanent winds. You know that because of Coriolis force we have an object moving over a very large distance that deflects towards its right in the northern hemisphere and towards its left in the southern hemisphere. So when wind blows from a region of high pressure to a region of low pressure, instead of taking a straight path, it would take a curvy path like this. And this deflection as we can see is towards right. So this is the movement of wind in the northern hemisphere. If the wind is moving in the southern hemisphere, then this would be the deflection of wind. Here we can see that the wind is deflecting towards its left. So this is about the wind that is deflecting at the very surface of earth. We know that at the surface, the wind is subjected to greater frictional force due to the surface of earth as well as the greater uh, density of atmosphere. Whereas as we move Towards the upper layers, lay, layers of troposphere, usually the density of air is low and also the friction offered by the surface is also low. And hence the winds that blow in the upper levels of troposphere are at very high velocity. As a result, the Coriolis force acting on these winds is also much much greater. So we know that Earth as a troposphere, which is a part of the lower la la layers of atmosphere. So as if you see, Usually we have troposphere which is thicker at the equator whereas its thickness is lower at the poles. At the equator the thickness is about 16 to 17 kilometers whereas at the poles the thickness is only about 8 to 9 kilometers. This is due to differences in insulation from sun. You know that insulation is the amount of sun's energy received. At the equator it is greater and hence the volume of air at the equator is also greater because of greater temperature reception and hence the thickness will be much greater whereas at the poles it is usually cold the air is denser and it is lesser in volume and hence the thickness will be comparatively lower so if you take the take into consideration the movement of winds in the upper levels of troposphere here the coriolis force is quite significant and hence instead of a small deflection like we have seen it it would be around 45 degrees at the surface that is wind will be deflecting by an angle of 45 degree at the surface so when we take the winds in the troposphere into consideration then we have these winds which deflect at much greater angles. For example if you take wind in the upper levels of troposphere then this would be the deflection of wind where the wind will be deflected by an angle of nearly 90 degree. So this deflection is due to the lack of friction as well as lesser denser atmosphere which in turn gives rise to offers less amount of friction uh, to the wind movement and hence the winds are subject to greater amount of Coriolis force. So this is the concept of geostrophic wind and jet streams that is there are two important jet streams one is polar jet stream and the subtropical jet stream. Usually subtropical jet stream is observed around 30 degrees north and south latitudes whereas polar jet streams are observed around 60 to 65 degrees north and south latitudes. And if you see the jet streams they are moving from west to east this is because of again the Coriolis force we will see that in, uh, in detail later. So this is about geostrophic winds. And the jet streams are the best example for geostrophic winds. Now let us look at formation of jet streams. We know that 
due to temperature difference there is the differences in pressure at the equator and poles usually equators are at low pressure we are talking about at the surface whereas at the poles at the surface the pressure systems are high pressure systems so we can see that wind is blowing from a region of high pressure to a region of low pressure the exact situation is seen in the upper levels of troposphere we can see at the equator we have low higher pressures at the top layers and lower pressures at the top layers in the at the poles so here the wind movement is from equator towards the poles so in this figure we can see that there is a single convection cell we know what is convection so instead of this single convection in reality we have multiple cells this is because of coriolis force again we know that there is deflection of about 45 degrees and this deflection gives rise to these kind of atmospheric cells the ones between equator and the temperate regions are called as hadley cell and the ones beyond that federal and polar cells so i have explained in detail about the influence of coriolis force and also the wind movement when dealing about permanent winds so watch my video on permanent winds for a better understanding of wind systems but here i just tell why there are multiple cells that is because of coriolis force so instead of this one big single cell we have multiple cells so this multiple cell system is important in the formation of jet streams we'll see how so if you look at this figure we can see how different air masses are separated by uh, due to different physical and uh, physical properties for example we can see a warmer air masses which are present at the equator followed by the colder comparatively colder air masses in the temperate regions and much colder air masses in the polar regions so if we look at look back at the figure about the cells atmospheric cells we can see that the tropical regions have warm atmosphere and it is associated with hadley cell whereas the temperate regions is comparatively cooler and it is associated with ferrell cell and the polar regions are very very cold and they are associated with polar cells so if you look at this we can see that this is approximately the hadley cell between the equator and the temperate regions and this would be approximately ferrell cell and then beyond that we have polar cell so from this we can see that the subtropical jet stream is formed between hadley cell and ferrell cell whereas the polar jet stream that is this one here we can see it is formed between ferrell cell and polar cells so as we as we have seen in the previous figure we have seen that the cells to be a very homogeneous kind of cells cell, cell system but in this figure we can see that the regions and their thicknesses or the extent varies significantly because of uh, various physical uh, factors so the region of coolness might sometimes be well within the temperate region whereas the temperate region might be uh, much can be extended beyond its influence towards the tropical regions so previously we have talked only about ideal conditions now in this figure we see, we see about practical conditions where we can see that the boundary between these regions like temperate tropical etc they are not exactly straight lines instead they are very curvy paths because of different physical properties of earth like we have greater uh, extent of oceans between continents and then we have continents which influence our temperatures in a great way so these differences between temperature and con uh, temperature difference between oceans and continents gives rise to irregular boundary for all these regions so the jet streams are the ones which blow between these regions so if you look at the formation of jet streams we can see the jet streams are formed due to geostrophic wind effect where we can see that the winds that are moving from the high pressure region to low pressure region so from the previous figure we can see that the winds at the surface are easterlies that is winds that are blowing from east to west at the surface of earth whereas when we consider the winds that are blowing in the upper layers of troposphere they are westerlies where they blow from west to east so in this figure we can see that we can say that the winds are blowing from the equator towards uh, the uh, temperate regions because these winds are blowing in the upper levels of troposphere and when we talk about air masses air masses extend from the bottom layers of the troposphere to the upper layers of troposphere so if this is the surface of earth we have troposphere to an extent of up to 10 to uh, sorry 16 to 17 kilometers at the equator and 8 to 9 kilometers at the poles so if we talk about air mass it extends all throughout this layer so air mass is the whole uh, system of air that extends from the bottom layers to the top layers and usually this is a homogeneous air mass that is its temperature and other physical properties remain more or less the uh, same that is it has both uh, temperature and pressures which are almost uniform so this is temperate region air mass this is polar re region air mass and this is 
ट्रॉपिकल एमास सो नाउ व्हेन वी टॉक अबाउट जेट स्ट्रीम्स वी कैन कंसीडर विंड्स दैट आर मूविंग इन द अपर लेवल्स ऑफ ट्रोपोस्फीयर सो इन कंट्रास्ट टू द बॉटम लेयर्स वेयर वी हैव हाई प्रेशर जोन एट द नियर द टेंपरेट रीजंस एंड लो प्रेशर एट द इक्वेटर वी हैव अ रिवर्स कंडीशन बिकॉज़ वी आर टॉकिंग अबाउट अ मूवमेंट ऑफ एयर इन द अपर लेवल्स ऑफ ट्रोपोस्फीयर सो वी हैव हाई प्रेशर जोन एट द इक्वेटर एंड लो प्रेशर एट द बाउंड्री so we can see this figure we we have high pressure at the upper layers whereas low pressures at the uh in the temperate regions in the upper layers so here the wind movement is from temperate regions to uh, tropical regions towards temperate regions and we have seen that upper level upper levels offer very less friction and hence these winds turn into geostrophic winds they where they move perpendicular to the pressure gradient force so this is how jet streams are formed so when wind movement is between the temperate uh, tropical region and the temperate region then we see subtropical jet stream and the wind movement when the wind movement is between temperate and polar regions we see the formation of polar jet stream so we can see jet streams are not always straight lines instead we see like we have a curvy path here these are this is not called as meandering so meandering gives rise to various important weather phenomena we'll discuss is it in detail so these winds mostly occur in the upper levels of troposphere and we can see here this is polar jet stream and this is subtropical jet stream again if you look at this we have subtropical jet stream which is comparatively weaker compared to the polar jet stream polar jet stream is quite stronger because it is exist between temperate region and polar region where the temperate uh, temperature contrast is maximum whereas if we consider the temperature contrast between the tropical and temperate regions the temperature contrast is comparatively lesser and hence the strength of jet stream is also much lesser now we can look at the definition of jet stream so jet stream are circumpolar narrow meandering upper tropospheric winds which blow at very great velocities and they are geostrophic winds where they blow perpendicular to the pressure gradient force and they are bounded by low speed winds and they are part of upper level westerlies so in my previous explanation i have explained why they are westerlies that is they are in the uh, they move in the upper levels of troposphere where they are westerlies in, instead instead of easterlies and then we know that why they are called as geostrophic winds now let us see and also upper tropospheric winds now let us see other explanation coming to types there are three kinds of uh, jet streams one is polar subtropical which are called as permanent jet streams and other than this we have temperate uh, temporary jet streams for example uh, somali jet stream is one example for temperate uh, sorry temporary jet stream about which we'll study about when studying indian monsoons now let us see jet streams are circumpolar winds circumpolar is nothing but the winds that blow that that follow a path with poles as their center so if we look from the top view we'll observe that the poles are at the center whereas the path of the jet stream is around this poles so they are called as circumpolar winds both polar as well as subtropical jet streams and they are called meandering winds because they don't always follow a straight path this is a near straight path instead sometimes they follow this curvy path and this curving is called as meandering so meandering occurs when the temperature contrast between various regions is comparatively lower for example here we we see this is a very continuous path so this straight path occurs when the temperature contrast is maximum usually the polar jet stream is continuous or the in the follows in a straight line or near straight lines during winters because the temperature contrast between temperate region and the polar region is maximum in the winters whereas the subtropical jet stream is stronger in summer and hence it follows a near straight line in the summer so polar jet streams follow a near straight line in winter whereas subtropical jet stream follow near straight line in summer so in the other cases when the temperature contrast is low for example uh, for the polar jet stream the temperature contrast is low in the summers and hence the polar jet stream meanders as we can see in this figure so the weaknesses that is the lesser temperature contrast gives rise to meandering whereas for subtropical jet streams it is in winter when subtropical jet stream meanders like this and with onset of winter again for the polar jet stream comes back to its original shape and likewise vice versa with the other jet stream so this is about meandering and based on the concept of meandering we have a concept called as rossby waves so rossby waves are nothing but meandering waves one particular important concept under rossby waves is the outbreak of cold wave condition as we can see here the polar wind which is moving towards so this is the north pole 
so the polar winds which are moving towards the temperate regions gives rise to a very cold situation in the temperate regions this is called as cold outbreak and the best example is polar vortex event polar vortex event about which i'll be explaining in, in future videos so it is closely associated with rossby waves and we can see where a cold wave breaks into or temperate regions it is a low pressure system whereas when a warm wave warm air mass moves into the colder regions it is a high pressure system as we can see here we'll see that it further and jet streams are high velocity winds usually their speeds vary from 150 to or 250 miles per hour usually the polar jet streams are much uh, far quicker when compared to the subtropical jet streams because of the greater difference in temperature contrast the most important concept is the impact of jet streams on weather so we have seen the curvy paths of jet streams where we have the curve that is towards the poles and then we have a curve which is towards the equator usually the curve towards the poles is called as ridge whereas or it is also called as crest c r e s t and the curve which is towards the equator so this is the equator and somewhere here poles and this kind of this kind of bend towards the equator is called as trough so the formation of trough and crust is important in explaining various weather phenomena so we can see in this figure how the crust and trough influences so where there is ridge usually the ridge creates a kind of a condition which is cyclonic in the upper levels of troposphere we know that what is cyclonic so when it is cyclonic in the upper levels of troposphere we have divergence or anti cyclonic conditions at the bottom layers so here it is anti cyclonic or divergence so we have convergence in the upper layers because of the jet stream we can see this is the path of jet stream so the wind which is in contact with the jet stream in the upper layers gets influenced in this direction so it establishes a, a rotation which is in this direction that is it is associated with convergence where wind convergence and this wind subsides to the bottom layers and creating a high pressure zone at the bottom layers so this is associated with divergence at the bottom layers so in my previous videos i have explained that divergence is associated with very clear weather clear and unstable weather uh, stable weather where we don't have cloud formation and there is very little rain or no rain at all so this kind of condition in is called as anti cyclonic and also it is a very highly stable condition whereas in the other case we can see this is called this is the trough region trough region creates divergence at the upper levels of troposphere which is associated with convergence at the bottom layers so convergence gives rise to low pressure system low pressure system gives rise to upliftment of air upliftment gives rise to clouds so clouds in the sense it, the atmosphere is very highly unstable so it results in great amount of rainfall so if you see the divergence at the upper layers is because of the uh, the cyclonic condition or uh, sorry anti cyclonic condition in the upper layers whereas we have cyclonic conditions in the bottom layers so this is anti, uh, this is cyclonic conditions at the bottom layers whereas we have anti cyclonic conditions in the top layers so this is how ridge and trough influence the conditions at the surface so when a jet stream moves in this direction usually this is how the rainfall can be predicted where there is ridge we usually we see a very stable condition where whereas where there is trough we see a very highly unstable condition this is why the atmosphere the climate prediction in usa is comparatively easier compared to that in india in india we have a kind of a climate where it is convectional in nature where we see the occurrence of thunderstorms and in in, in winters we have uh, tropical cyclones all these are formed due to a very different mechanism and the tracing of path of these mechanisms is quite uh tougher whereas when we talk about the conditions of temperate regions especially where the jet streams play a very important role the prediction of climatic conditions is very easy because once we know the path of the jet stream which doesn't change very quickly so based on this path we can predict what will be the temperate uh, climatic conditions at the bottom layers of the troposphere so the uh, weather prediction in usa is very easy compared to in india because of this kind of climatic uh, or physical phenomena like jet streams um, with jet streams we also talk will also talk about frontolysis frontolysis is nothing but front formation which is directly associated with temperate cyclones so the path of temperate cyclones is greatly influenced by jet streams just like in this figure similar mechanism we'll see in detail later and along with it there is a concept called as jet streak where in a jet streak instead of a very 
particular thickness usually just trick as a varying thickness sometimes we can see like this uh, in this way so this region is in a very narrow region it creates a funneling effect whereas in this region it is very wide so when something is flowing from much wider area towards much narrower area then the velocity of such a medium will greatly be enhanced at the narrow regions so the velocity will be much higher in this region and the pressure here will be very high whereas the pressure at the other end will be comparatively lower now compare this with the figure here we can see here when there is just trick we have eye pressure at the top layers so it is associated with piling up of air and this piling up of air subsides to the bottom layers creating a high pressure system at the bottom whereas the divergence is associated associated with comparatively low pressure at the upper layers so low pressure I mean i mean at the upper layers is associated with sucking or a vacuum like uh, situation which sucks up air towards it so here we see upliftment of spiraling spiraling air and this spiraling and upliftment of air creates a low pressure system at the bottom so we again see a huge amount of rainfall where there is where the wind is moving out of the narrow region so this is the narrow region when there is uh, that is this narrow region is called as jet streak so when it moves out of the jet streak usually we are we see the conditions which are very highly unstable whereas in the other case where the wind is flowing into the jet streak we see the conditions which are very stable so this is also one particular region which affects the climate in temperate regions so we can see in this figure when the jet stream is weak uh, that is in case of polar jet streams it happens in summers we can see the warm air which is pushing towards the colder regions and cold air which is pushing to the towards the warmer regions and hence this region will be comparatively very cold and this region will be very warm than usual so this is again very important for the phenomenon of jet streams usually in certain regions of usa in spite of being in temperate regions in summers we see very hot conditions where the temperatures might go well above 40 so this rise in temperature is because of the upward movement of warm air so we can we have previously discussed how there is cyclonic uh, cyclonic spin at the this is called a trough region and at the ridge we have anti cyclonic conditions so in 2012 there was huge flooding in uk usually uk receives a very moderate rainfall all throughout the year it's a very ideal climatic condition that exist in uk but the movement of jet streams had disrupted this ideal conditions and created huge floods in 2012 and this kind of flood kind of condition is associated with uh, the change in path of jet streams usually this is how jet stream flows in uk usually bringing a low pressure system much comparatively north in northern regions of uk and as at the low pressure region that is near the trough region we have great amount of rainfall here whereas in the other region we don't have a significant rainfall whereas jet stream has shifted quite below this region the low pressure system intensified just above the england and uh, surrounding regions and it stayed here for a very long time this trough stay, stayed above just above uk for a very long time and hence uk saw a huge amount of flooding in a particular period of the year so this kind of disruption in weather patterns can be caused due to jet streams so jet streams are sometimes beneficial like in usa where they bring good amount of rainfall even into the interior of continents whereas in certain regions where they stay for a very long time they can cause huge amount of you know, very large scale flooding and coming to aviation jet streams also influence aviation we have seen that jet streams flow in west to east direction so this is the direction of jet streams so when aeroplane want to move from japan to san francisco usually it is more convenient or fuel efficient when it follows the path of jet streams so if it moves along the jet streams what is this is the, the addition in velocity because it can uh, save fuel by adding the velocity of uh, jet streams whereas in the other case when the movement is from san francisco towards japan usually it takes a path which is much away from the, the jet streams this is to avoid the influence of jet streams so as the wind is blowing from west to east if the aeroplane wants to move from east to west it cannot follow the path of jet streams and there will be a retarding velocity created due to this opposite movement of jet streams so wind uh, usually flights follow the path of jet stream when they move from japan to san francisco whereas in the other case when they move from san francisco to japan usually they follow a path which avoids the path of jet streams so this is all about jet streams
So if you like my video, please subscribe to my channel. I'll be posting more videos on 